We live in an age of heroes. Well, no, okay, maybe we don't in real life. But in video games, the age of the hero shooter is most certainly upon us. Last year's Overwatch popularized what games like Team Fortress once started, and everything from MOBAs like Battleborn to single-player adventures like the recent Agents of Mayhem wants a slice of that pie. The somewhat zany, cartoonish casts of characters in games right now are becoming a huge selling point. In comes Lawbreakers, which tries to capture that same uniqueness and creates some pretty fun gameplay but has a tough time finding its own unique identity. Lawbreakers is an all-multiplayer affair like so many of its brethren. For the price tag, you get a pretty good package. Quick play means access to a number of different play modes. There's Blitzball, where two teams have to fight over control of a sphere and get it back to their base. Then there's Uplink, where two teams fight over control of a satellite to bring back to their base. And Overcharge, where two teams tie over control of, well, you, you get the idea. The more unique mode from the other three is Turf War, a capture zone mode made variable by capture points that change around pretty quickly. Maybe too quickly, actually. The central twist in Lawbreakers is the idea that mobility can be every bit as essential as gunplay and balanced specials. That factor shows its face in the form of an anti-gravity field, cast over the center chunk of every arena, casting everyone into a floaty mode that instantaneously changes the combat dynamic. And it's cool. I, I would even go so far as to say the physics of it work really well. It takes some getting used to because it's the presence of gravity followed by the sudden lack thereof, but it feels really good to drift around cover and take shots at foes once the flow is felt. Unfortunately, less synchronized in that flow is the language of character design to level design. Each character is equipped with some kind of dash button. For the steadfast juggernaut, it's a consistent quickened pace. The twitchy vanguard gets a huge jet boost, and the slow and indomitable titan gets a chargeable leaping strike. And they needed to have these things, in a game that seems so built around quick movement and navigation, but at the same time the standard movement speed for just about every character is still kind of slow. Not too slow for any game, but too slow for what it seems like Lawbreakers is really trying to be. The speed issue is an issue in part because of the health issue, and oh yes, there is a health issue. Weapon strength is potent enough across basically all boards that every character turns into something in the range of like a 2-4 to four hit kill. And that doesn't feel like enough. Anti-gravity means more space for everyone to become a target. It also means more space for people to dodge, but only so much as their speed allows. Those dashes are only apt enough to be an advantage for some characters. It seems like the roster as a whole needs one of three things. More health, more speed, or some weapon nerfs all around. To its credit, Lawbreakers does a pretty good job with its visual presentation and sense of style. Each class will translate to one of two characters, depending on whether the player has been sorted into the team of the Law or that of the Breakers. All of them have their own dialogue and some really neat and unique designs. The game takes on a pseudo-realistic cyberpunk look as opposed to the CGI Pixar style that's all the rage right now, and it pulls that off just fine. There are some places where I feel like I'm not getting the joke though. The overly comedic voice of the Blitzball comes to mind as a place where the idea of charm just feels forced. For the most part though, Lawbreakers has some really cool style to it. Less solid and consistent though are the game's servers. Matchmaking fluctuates between reasonable to taking forever and the latter is becoming the case more and more often already. If anything can wear the crown of being Lawbreaker's biggest threat, it's the fact that whatever semblance of community it had may already be dwindling. In the couple days leading up to this review, I sat and waited for as much as 15 minutes without getting sorted into a match. Part of this might have to do with matches going long, to be fair, but part of it also likely has to do with people already dropping out. Once you get into a match though, Lawbreakers can have some really fun moments even with the imbalance. Three out of four modes are extremely similar. I don't think the game can be pardoned for this. But none of them are garbage, none of them are miserable to play. I do think that the capture points in Turf War change too quickly to allow much time for strategizing though. Often, it just comes down to the luck of the draw for whoever happens to be closest to where they move. It's a bit disappointing that the most unique of the four game modes is kind of the least well built. Lawbreakers is good, but it doesn't feel polished to the level that frequent online shooter players have come to expect. Its character design philosophy is often at odds with the design of its levels and game modes, and while that doesn't completely bite away at the fun, it does do damage to what is otherwise a technically well-conceived package. It hasn't done too great a job of finding that unique identity for itself within its world, but it's trying with guns blazing. I may go down too quickly to do much. 
But throwing up a defensive wall as the juggernaut and turning around to lay waste to foes coming in from above still carries a certain kind of sweetness. Enough to give Lawbreakers a 3.5 out of 5. Thank you so much for watching this video review of Lawbreakers. If you liked what you see here, you should click onto the rest of the Hey Plo Player YouTube channel where we have other video reviews, other uh, Let's Play content like I, Coleman is Doomed, where the madman is playing through Doom with just a pistol. Uh, a pistol and a knife, to be fair. He, he's gonna die, but it'll be a slightly slower death. And then once you're done checking out our wonderful video content on the YouTube channel, you should head on over to HeyPoorPlayer.com, which is our main site and our main hub, for even more news, reviews, uh, a lot of editorial opinion pieces and interesting lists and whatnot. And that's where you're gonna find just a ton of creative people hard at work doing really amazing stuff. You can also follow us on Twitter at HeyPoorPlayer. You can follow me at Extreme Salsing if you want. And you can find our official Facebook page to find out more about us and what it is that we do. Thank you for watching, and go get that Blitzball already.